should we believe a metaphysical picture that's based on science that hasn't been well established? And let's be honest, the cosmolo cosmological models that Hawking and Ladinov are arguing from are not well established cosmological models. So even if I thought they could make a good argument based on that cosmology for the sort of worldview picture they're giving, well, that cosmology is not something I'm necessarily going to commit myself to yet. So that's the qualification. But now let me suspend that qualification and say, look, let's suppose that there were some cosmological model, as Hawking and Mladinov are describing, where, for example, there was some sort of quantum mechanical process. This is the general idea they have in mind. A quantum mechanical process that explains the existence of space, time, and matter. Okay, so the idea is you have some sort of quantum wave function. There's a probability for nothing existing, and there's a probability for something existing. Now, notice, of course, the word nothing here. We have to be careful because even if nothing in terms of space, time, and matter existed, there was still the wave function that determined the probability. So, okay, still, let's set this aside. Let's just think about the statements they make. Okay, so the statement, it's not necessary for God to get the thing started. Now, I have a couple reactions to this. The first reaction is, so, um, here, here, there's, there are similar examples. So take the theory of inertia, where we say that something, or the, or the idea of inertia, which of course is much modified in contemporary physics, but this traditional modern physical idea, that an object will keep, con it'll continue in rectilinear motion unless affected by a force. So you might think, aha, we thought God was necessary to sustain things in motion, but now we have this physical explanation, inertia, so therefore God we don't need God anymore. God drops out of the picture. And I just think, if you thought you needed God to get a good explanation of physical facts, then you weren't doing science in the right way. Because you can have a perfectly reasonable scientific description of a phenomenon, I think, that lives up to good scientific standards and still believe that God is incredibly active in the process. You just say, I don't have scientific control over the way God was interacting with this process. That's not something that I can build a good scientific theory about. So when they say, if we had a theory that gave an, a, an intricate physical mechanism to bring the universe into existence, then you have a reason not to believe in God, I, I think this is highly misleading. And actually, I think it portrays, I think they're arguing against, it's, this is not their fault that they have to argue against people who have had bad ideas, arguing against this idea that the only place for God is perhaps at the beginning of the universe, a sort of deistic idea that God is there to get it started and then God sits back and watches the universe go. But I think a lot of theists, especially theists in the tradition that I come from, they were never tempted to think about God that way in the first place. I, I think they think God is active all the time and everywhere, and so you shouldn't wait for science to have a gap and then seize upon that gap and say, there's God. Because no, he's also there in the natural mechanisms that we use science to describe. 